Hello, BookTube. Um, this is a book chat uh, about um, Anne McCaffrey's The White Dragon, the third in the Dragon Riders of Pern trilogy. Um, been doing this buddy read with Elena Macrodina. Um, I'll uh, put a link to her channel below and we did all three all three novels we just finished up this is we break them up so that we read them throughout the month by chapter and this and, and this format's worked for us I think and this is chapter 16 to 21 of the white dragon so it, it finishes it off um, and I one thing up about the trilogy first of all having just completed it I read it when it first came out um, obviously was quite a bit younger then, and I, uh, was a young reader, and, um, I was really curious to see after all this time how, if I would even like the books, if they'd have the same impact on me, um, and I found that I, I may have appreciate them even more now that I'm older. Um, which is which comes as a bit of surprise to me. That doesn't always happen when I read. Um, so in this in these chapters, sixteen through twenty one, we continue on with the main character pair, which is uh, Jackson and his white dragon Ruth. And <coughs> the coming of age elements continue. Um, all the way up to the very end of end of the uh, the uh, book, when Jackson comes into his own, both socially and, and personally, and uh, as a, a, a as a well-rounded individual, and um, he really, I really grew to like him quite a bit, um, and some of the characters, besides the White Dragon. Um, some of the uh, different younger characters that are moving into specific roles in the uh, in these uh, guilds of people in society, the um, the Harpers and uh, people in the weirs where the dragons are, and then in the various skilled guilds, um, the miners and. Um, all these sorts of things are they're very interesting and all of this continues on throughout the trilogy but this is really really all set on the southern continent you know most of Pern history as far as we had been led to believe early on occurred in the north but there's a little more to it than that. In the southern continent, we get the impression it's quite vast eventually. It's also very unknown, very mysterious. And there's exploration being taken at this point, not with, just with dragons, but with sailing vessels, traveling up and down the coast, fishing fleets, making observations. The old timers have been settled into a section of the southern continent. A section we find is very, very uh, small compared to the continent itself. The man who becomes, if not in name, but in effect, um, the holder there is being flooded with the younger sons of various lords. And that creates tension. There's a love story. That always creates tension. And the pace fluctuates a bit, um, but I found it constantly entertaining. We have um, some archaeology going on, discovery of the first settlements on Pern, and uh, that was fascinating to me. Fascinating. So, I really, really, really enjoyed all three books. I think, I remember them making a big impression on me when they first came out. 
but it, like I say, it's been a long time, and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to react to them, and I very much enjoyed them. I'm very, very glad I read them. Um, I'm glad that Elena agreed to do this buddy read. It's been great fun. So with that, The White Dragon ends up the, the trilogy, and um, thank you, Book 2.